welcome back to our channel. So our last case was the Whitney Houston case. Now this has led us on to today's case, which is the Bobby Christina Brown case. Um, the reason I've chose to do this case is for the fact that when we covered the Whitney Houston case, it is obviously public knowledge that her daughter died around the same type of circumstances. So I thought it would be very interesting. I do plan in using the spirit box today as well, just like yesterday's case with Whitney Houston. I found it very interesting. Thank you for all your comments on yesterday's video. Um, what you heard in the spirit box, as I said, it can be quite hard of hearing. But when you get used to it, so if you've maybe watched it and never heard anything, even go back and watch that last part again. But look at the comments as well. Um, they're very, very interesting. It helps build a picture. So thank you so much. Now, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for supporting our channel. And let's get started on our next case, the Bobby Christina Brown case. Bobby Christina Brown was born on the 4th of March, 1993, in the Livingston, New Jersey. Her mum was Whitney Houston. Her father was Bobby Brown. Our godparents were C.C. Winans and Clive Davis. Now, Clive Davis was a music executor who was a very close friend of Whitney Houston. Bobby Christina Brown was also known as Chrissy. Now, Chrissy's first TV appearance was on the Barbara Walters show at eight months old alongside her mum. And then she attended the American Awards alongside her mum as well. And also in 1998, her voice appeared on the album Your Love Is My Love by Whitney Houston. Now, again, from the word go, Chrissy had been not camera shy. She was used to the media. She didn't know any different in a sense. She also did appear on Whitney's Christmas album in 2003. So again, she was very close to her mum. She sounds like, like Whitney did with her mum, Sissy was always in the music industry, networking within the music industry as well. What I do get from the start of this is the age of Chrissy was when she was first in front of the camera. But at that time, if you remember from her previous case, between 93 and 96, there was a lot going on in Whitney's life as well. So again, Chrissy would have been open to seeing all that. Chrissy's parents divorced in 2007 and Whitney was awarded custody of Chrissy. Now, also, it was believed that between her parents' drug problem, she'd seen all this through her childhood. Her childhood was, again, classes being quite hard. But also in the media, they were also reporting around her weight. So from a very young age, she was subjected to body image and what people thought. And I, all different unflattering types of photos. But again, what we do forget, she was just a child. Um, I don't know if she's seen that at that time, but I can imagine even if she did, or a photograph of herself, again, that could have been something that could have lasted with Chrissy for a long, long time. When Chrissy was 10, Bobby Brown was charged with assault in Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston stood by Bobby Brown at this point. And again, this would have been something that would have probably stuck out to Chrissy as in acceptable behaviours, that this type of behaviour would be okay. It was also said that Chrissy knew that her mum was a ticking time bomb, ready to go off. Now, this wasn't confirmed when Chrissy was young. But through autopsy reports, it was confirmed that there was a possibility that she did self-harm. She had a lot of scars on her arms. So again, if that was the case, now these wounds weren't fresh at pathology. So again, it could have been from childhood and getting into adulthood or teenage years as well. At the age of 14, Chrissy met her partner, Nick Gordon. Now she was 14 and he was 17. From the word go, it was said that Chrissy was besotted with them. And I did say in a previous video around the Whitney Houston case, I felt Whitney was very obsessive around Bobby Brown. And I do see this is where the behaviours are the exact same. From the start of that relationship, it was very obvious that Chrissy looked up to Nick. He was older, he was 17. In her head, she probably thought he knew better than her. But also, if she'd had an unstable childhood with her father, he was often of the security, 
that she'd never had before. So I do believe the obsession was partly to do with that side of it as well. Nick Gordon's family decided they were leaving and moving. And it was agreed by Whitney Houston that Nick could come and live with Whitney and Chrissy. Now, bearing in mind, Chrissy was 14 and he was 17 at the time, so that's quite a big commitment in a relationship at such a young age. But again, the security of it, it suited them at the time. Again, every mum makes their own decision around that, but I just think that must have been a lot of pressure for that girl as well, at the fact that she had to then maintain a relationship at the age of 14, 15. Um, with an older man. In February 2012, Chrissy was staying at the Beverly Hills Hilton alongside her mum, Whitney. Now, Whitney was due to perform at the pre-Grammy Awards, but something had happened in the lobby earlier that day where Whitney had made a scene, erratic behaviour. We did speak about it in the previous video, and Chrissy had taken her up to her room. Now, that was the last time that Chrissy had seen her mum Cecilia alive. Vega, who joins us live from the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles. Cecilia? Yes, good morning, George. It happened here at 3.43 yesterday afternoon when a member of Houston's entourage located her body inside this hotel. So far, police and the coroner are refusing to offer details about what may have caused her tragic Two days death. later, after Whitney's death, Chrissy collapsed and there was an ambulance called for her and she was taken to hospital and it was said it was down to the shock of her mother's death. There is footage of that. I'm not going to show the footage out of respect. Chrissy really did struggle to get over her mum's death. Now, she'd done an interview with Oprah Winfrey, which I will show you a clip of, where she's saying that she's starting to get better, taking each day as it comes. But what her friend said was, behind the scenes, she was heavily depressed and that she had said that she wanted to leave the world to join her mother. Now again, I don't know if there was any suicide attempts made at that point, but looking back at pathology reports, it is suspected that there were possible suicide attempts made around that time as well to do with Chrissy. So again, like a, a social media, we said it yesterday, everything looks great from the outside and it's a big lesson to everyone. It doesn't mean what you see on the outside is what's going on in the inside. Nine times out of ten, that's not the case. And especially in that situation. I will let you see the clip of the Oprah Winfrey. And again, I think we forget she's just a young girl, still a child in a sense, and people are expecting her to deal with so much. You know, sometimes it's, it's, it's so surreal that, you know, I, I still walk in the house like, Mom, you know, I still, you know, call her name. But mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, I've accepted it, you know? You have accepted it. I've accepted it, I've mm -hmm. accepted it. Did and you ever fear that this could happen? Did you ever fear that she'd be gone too soon from you? As no. a little girl, no? No, mm -hmm. no, never. But like I said, she, you know, until until she was gone, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't I didn't understand, but she prepared me for it. That's how, it, that's how it's gonna go. You know, oftentimes everybody who has lost somebody we all play back the last day, the last moments, the last. Have you been doing that? What was your last day like with her? Um, funny, the last day, the last day. Um, sometimes, you know, she would come in my room and she would sleep with me, you know, she lay down with me, you know, mm -hmm. this and that. But that very last day, it was, it was so, so early in the morning, mm -hmm. so early. Very last day, I don't know. I, I I went to go get her, and I said, you know, mom, will you just come lay down with me. You know, just mm -hmm. come lay with me. She stayed with me all night and all day, all night and all day. And they said that she was rubbing my head, just holding me, you know, everything. And I just and I slept in her arms mm -hmm. all night, all day, all night long. Wow. Are you finding through this period that you didn't know your own strength? Yeah. Mm, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't. Because if you would have asked me this month ago, I would have said I, I wouldn't be able to get through it. Mm -hmm. I would have said no. I, I would have went right with her. I wouldn't have gotten through it at all. But You're getting through it. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Is there anything you want to clear up you want the world to know? That literally, you know, now she, you know, she, she literally is an angel, but everyone wanted to say that she was... Something that she wasn't, and this and that. I saw her hurt. I heard that, you know, I saw her cry, you know, and, and I held her through that. You know, mm -hmm. we, we held each other through that. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, 
so many people saying so many other things, mm -hmm. but they don't know who she really was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know that, you know, she, everything that people are saying about her, you know, all that, all that negativity. It's just, it's, Three months after Whitney's death, they decided to go back to doing the reality show. It was said that Chrissy didn't want to do the show, and again, it goes without saying, especially if she was grieving her mum. The first three months, she, grief is not even there yet. It's still shock. But she did go back and do it, and she also convinced her partner, Nick Gordon, to do it with her. Now, within the show, they did get engaged, but the Houston family was not happy about it. And what happened was, there is a scene, which I will pop in for you, we are, they're announcing their engagement and you can see around the full table that these people are not happy. I think in a situation like that, they've had to support Chrissy because if they don't, they'll not have Chrissy in their lives because what I do feel is that this Nick Gordon was a very, very controlling character. But it does make sense because they were together from they were young, 14 and 17. Neither of them know better in a sense. <laughs> The couple then moved to Atlanta and for the next 18 months they lived there but at that point there were numerous calls made to the police for complaints, domestic abuse and again I will pop the calls in and a wee bit of a trigger warning but it's more so because in the calls they do say it's not the first time it's happened so at ages you can understand people have parties but by the sounds of the calls, this was ongoing and this was a very, very regular occurrence. And the same, it was the same type of behaviours. They could smell the smell of weed. They knew these people were taking drugs. And there was a lot of aggression coming from that as well. So I'll pop the calls in and let you see them, hear them for yourself. Apartment. Did the noise is coming from her unit? Yeah, it's coming from her unit. It's coming from her unit. It's actually. like partying. They're probably over there smoking dope, so I'd probably send two people over there because they're always... On the 23rd of January 2015, a neighbour reported a disturbance outside Chrissy's home. Now, again, this could have been classic. Also, there was a picture leaked of Chrissy taking cocaine at the age of 17. Again, what struck me with that photo was she said that it was a set-up and that it hadn't happened, but in the photo she does look very very comfortable with it and it's scary to think at the age of 17 how comfortable she could have been with something like that and what you've got to ask yourself did she choose that lifestyle or did she not know any different because of the lifestyle that her parents had lived at Chrissy's 21st Nick and Chrissy spent it in California now Nick Gordon had popped a photo up of Chrissy in her bikini and it got the media talking again at how frail she was. The same types of behaviour that her mum had endured not so long before her, talking about how frail she was and because they had made such a thing about her weight when she was younger, so there were photos where it was before and right up until that date. I can't imagine that would have felt good for any woman, but also I can't imagine they would have expected the backlash that they got from that picture, considering that they shouldn't have in the first place. But again, it was history starting to repeat itself and it looked that way as well. Because if you do look back in the photo, it is the same type of frame as Whitney um, around that. But again, worry, stress, lack of eating can bring that in as well. And this little girl who was still a child was still grieving her mum. But she also just inherited the two million from her mum. had inherited 10% of her mum's estate at this point of the $2 million. As I said, they were spending it in California. She took a lot of media abuse and a lot of speculation around why she was so frail. This is where it gets a little random. So the couple randomly asked for a press conference and they announced that they had got married. Now, there was no wedding pictures. There was nothing to suggest or any sort of celebration. So at that point, no one knew if the Houston family had went to the wedding or what the setup was to do with my the wedding. My backbone, my my side, my, my front, my my head, shoulders, everything. On the twenty seventh of January two thousand and fifteen, Chrissy was out with her friends in the car. Daniela Bradley, who was eighteen, now Chrissy lost control of her car and went to the other lane and hit another car, seriously injured the driver, and the, ca the crash was classed as a major accident. 
Now, that wasn't Chrissy's first accident. In the 12 months before that, she'd been involved in quite a few accidents where it had been kind of careless driving. Um, Nick Gordon was also involved in some of those accidents. Um, to this day, the police don't know why she lost control of the car. There's no speculation around Daniela Bradley saying why that happened either. I did have a little look. But again, her life was spiralling out of control at this point. And you usually find when you're in a mode like that and you feel like that, everything else seems to get worse as well. And I can imagine that's exactly how she was feeling at that point. On the 29th of January 2015, Chrissy put up two posts on social media. The first one was she posted, getting your shit together is one thing, but keeping it together is another. The second post was, I get hit, I get up, I get hit, I get knocked down seven times, I get up eight. Now, she was obviously trying to speak herself up and try and make herself feel better, but to me, posts like that would scream that she is struggling, that life's taking over her. But again, grief can do funny things to a lot of people. It can make you very bitter. An old friend had came forward and said that Chrissy and Nick were both taking heroin and they could be spending up to $1,000 a day on drugs, not just heroin, but cocaine as well as marijuana. Chrissy's cousin, Kelsey, had spoke to her two days before her death and he said that when he spoke to her on the phone that she had to say to Nick on many occasions to be quiet and then the call ended abruptly. He did try to call her back three times, but she didn't answer. Again, he just put it down to, the family were used to those types of behaviors with Nick. They knew that he was controlling, but they knew that Chrissy wasn't willing to come out of that relationship or situation. So again, he put it down to it being expected that it would be like that at times. At this time as well, Daniela Bradley and Max Lopez, her partner, had moved in with Chrissy and Nick. And Daniela had stated that Nick had lunged at Chrissy and knocked her two teeth out. Now, with the pathology report, she was missing two teeth. But because of the circumstances around her death, the fact pathology didn't take place to six months later, they couldn't prove this other than the witness statement that Daniela Bradley had said. On the 30th of January 2015, Nick Gordon was out with friends on a binge, drinking and taking cocaine. He appeared home at 6am the next morning. He suspected that Chrissy was cheating on him and checked all the security footage while he was away. There was an argument that erupted. Now, Daniela Bradley said that this argument went on for 30 minutes and then things went very, very quiet. Daniela Bradley and Mac Lopez, her partner, did make a statement to say that Nick Gordon came into their room, sat at the bottom of the bed, and said, I want a pretty little white girl like you. Now, Nick Gordon denies all these claims. He does say that he went into the room and slept at the bottom of the bed. But again, Daniela Bradley and Max Lopez both state that something different happened. But again, because of pathology, it can just be a witness At 10 a.m., Max Lopez found Chrissy lying face down in the bath. He pulled her out the bath, he shouted for Nick, he started CPR. Now, while he was doing CPR, Nick was apparently running about saying, clean up, clean up. He eventually took over the CPR for Chrissy, and Max Lopez called the police and called the ambulance. Again, Nick Gordon denies all these claims. When the paramedics got there, they took Chrissy to the hospital. Now, at this point, she was classed as technically alive. The Houston family did say that when she got to the hospital, it looked like her hair had been pulled out and she, it looked like she had a lot of bruises. But again, there was no pathology for six months, so this could never be determined other than the witness statement. Anyway, they did put Chrissy into a medically induced coma. Now, at this point as well, it was discovered that by the Houston family that Nick and Chrissy had never legally been married. There was no papers in any sort of court. So it did transpire at this point that that was a lie. It was then decided by Bobby Brown and the family that on the 4th of February, they decided that they would not let Nick Gordon back near Chrissy around the hospital. And he was denied access from that point onwards. And they did stick with their guns. Nick on posted him. abusive tweets to Bobby Brown. He also said that he would be the person that would be able to help Chrissy wake up with his voice. All these different things. 
Now again, they were together for a lot of years, so there is a bit of truth probably in that, that Chrissy would have wanted Nick at her bedside. But it was, as we've seen through this story, it was a toxic, toxic relationship and suspicions were grown for the Houston family. So I do feel they did do the right thing by stopping that contact. But what I do find strange is, because of the pathology side, why it's all witness statements, why can't these be taken serious into something else? Bobby Brown and family decided on a multi-pound lawsuit was raised by her family accusing Nick of serious crimes against Bobby. Christina, including abuse, theft, assault and wrongful death. Now, again, the charge of the wrongful death was Daniela's witness statements that the family was going on. But it was said that Daniela Bradley had also said that she believed that Nick Gordon had given Chrissy a cocktail of all these drugs that were in her system and then had placed her into the bath, um, possibly drowned. drowned her in the bath. Now, again, because the pathology took six months to take place, one thing was decided around the wrongful death that a pathologist looked at it and said there is no way that cocktail of drugs was given all at once. That was over a period of time, so it didn't then fit the timeline of where he'd been out to 6am in the morning and then come back in, and as Daniela said. But what I do find about that is... Like any woman, we speak to our best friends about everything. I do feel there's some sort of truth in that, but again, we'll come to the conclusion with it. But what I do think is um, that's why the case possibly collapsed was because of the pathology side, but it was more to do with the fact that it had taken six months for pathology because obviously Chrissy didn't pass away until the 26th of July at a hospice. Um, now, again, she was just a young girl domestic abuse victim as well, but also a very, very hard time. Pathologists believed that it was possible that with the cocktail of drugs that Chrissy had taken, that she had fell into the bath herself. Um, as we know, she was technically still alive um, when the paramedics got there, but Max Lopez said that when he was giving her CPR, she coughed. I did a little bit of homework into that. That can actually mean that the heart's restarting. So again, I think maybe they again they have caught her at the right time, but on the other side of it, um, it's how long she was in that bath for. I'm going to do the spirit box, and I'm also going to do the conclusion. But what we'll do is we'll do the spirit box first. I have said already it's very hard to hear and it can give you a little bit of a headache. But please pop your comments below if you hear anything because you'll notice with our previous videos that it really does build build a picture. I will leave it on a little bit longer. If there's any questions I've missed on the spirit box you'd like me to ask, pop it in the comments as well. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe in this video. It's Let's started. Do it. So again, it can give you a little bit of a headache. Just bear with me on it, but please pop your comments below. Chrissy Brown, are you with us? <laughs> Was Nick Gordon responsible for your death? Her Will there be justice around your day, Bobby Christina? Did you put yourself in the bath? Is Nick hiding something? Who was 
Hayden. Can you tell us what happened? Did Daniela Bradley or Max Lopez have anything to do with your death? They were upstairs. Are you with your mum? And granddad. Are you at peace? No. Is there anything you would like to tell us? Where you murdered? Is there anything we need to know before we finish? Thank you everyone for watching, taking part, liking, commenting and subscribing. I'm now going to do my conclusion on this. Um, what a very sad, sad story, but very fascinating just because we've covered the bit the Houston case. So again, yesterday we've reported on when Bobby Christina Brown was born and more around her mum's lifestyle. But I do feel that Bobby Christina's Brown lifestyle was pretty much parallel to her mum's in a lot of ways. I do feel that Nick Gordon, just my opinion, is guilty of something. What I feel he's guilty of, and this is maybe where I'll put things in its head, is that he placed her in the bath to sober her up and leave her. I feel like when he came home from that night out, she was as bad as what he was. And I do believe that it did escalate where he has. I see him physically lifting her into the bath and I feel what's happened is she's been facing up the way. Um, but as time went on, she's turned round and that would make sense. That would make sense to why she was maybe in the bath so long as well for the fact that she was maybe facing up the way and then eventually her natural reaction has been to turn round, hence why she's then been face down. Now, again, he I feel he doesn't want to say that because admitting any sort of responsibility would be admitting something rather than nothing, whether he's escaped jail, there's been nothing else said about this. But I do predict in the next five years something else will come out around this. What I do feel is that, that Daniela Bradley and Max Lopez, I don't feel they're longer together. I'll need to check that out. But I do feel speculation coming out again around them both where there's going to be three stories. And that's what the spirit box was saying about three. And the middle story will be the correct story. And I feel it's Max Lopez with the correct story. I feel there was possibly something going on between Daniela and Nick Gordon as well. Um, I do feel he did believe that he did say that at the bottom of the bed. I feel the fact he was so comfortable to walk in and say those words or sit at the bottom of that bed and sleep in with another couple and things, that there was certainly more to it. 
I don't feel Max Lopez knew anything about it as such, but I do believe in recent years he's reliving something in his mind that's starting to make sense. I don't feel he went out his way to murder Chrissy. I feel it was all unintentional and things, but I do believe that he's never took the responsibility. And what I find sad as well is that the fact that she got to the hospital with such injuries and they were never investigated at that point for domestic abuse. He has denied most of the claims that has been made against them. But it is with Bobby Brown's sister who has said that she's seen that Chrissy's hair had been pulled out her head and she also had a lot of bruises as well. So I think with all these witness statements, not everybody can be telling lies and I do think it'll be revisited for that point. Very, very interesting case. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, Again, if you've not watched the Whitney Houston case, that was popped over onto our YouTube channel yesterday. Thank you again for all your support, like, comment and subscribing. We are on Facebook and Instagram. A lot of people have been messaging through our YouTube for your readings. You have to do it through Facebook and Instagram. It's Christie's Readings over there. You'll be able to see the reviews of the page over there and get a better idea of how I work around the psychic side of things. But I really do hope you've enjoyed it today. Like, comment and subscribe and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care and stay safe.